Welcome, Manmin Church member, and the new will come to Manmin Church. Worship the Lord in this morning service. Amen. Yeah, my hand, my hand. Welcome all of you to the s u g a d to meet your God, to give glory to God in this morning service. Na wakaribisha katika ibada, leo a s u b u i kumtukuza mungu na kumfanya ibada mbele zake. Now this morning, asubu ya leo, I will talk about condition to receive blessing from the Lord God. n i t w a z u n g u m u z i a masharti ama hali ya kupokea baraka kutoka kwa mungu. First John chapter 3, verse 21, 22. Waraka wa kwanza wa Yohana 3, 21, baka 22. Dear friend, uh, if our heart do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from Him anything we ask because we obey His command and what do what please Him. Wapendwa kama m i y o yetu haitu hukumu, tunao ujasiri mbele za mungu, lolote tuombalo, tualipokea kutoka kwa ke kwa sababu, tumeziti amrizake na kutenda yale na yompendeza. God commanded the Israelite to march into the promised land of Ghanan after spending their lives in the wilderness for 40 years. Baada wa Israeli kushinda maisha ni mwao miaka rubaini jangwani, mungu wako amrisha waezi kuelekea katika nchi ya kanan. Can you imagine what Joshua and the people felt? Unezi imagine kila mbacho Joshua na wale watu walihisi. Moses, the man of God, longed for this land of Ghana so much. Na hata Musa, mtumishi wa Mungu alikuwa na hamu ya nchi hiyo sana. And Joshua and the people were longing for this time to go into this land. Now the time had finally come. Na Joshua na watu wake walikuwa na hamu sana ya kuingia katika nchi hii ambayo waliahidiwa na wakati sasa ulikuwa umefika. How can you express their emotion and excitement? Tutaezaje kuonyesha hisia na msisimko wao? They must have thought the day of God's promise finally came. Pengine waliwazia siku ya ahadi ya Bwana hatimaye imefika. Now we can truly enjoy the blessing in the promised land where milk and honey flow. Na sasa tumefika kufurahia baraka ya Mungu katika nchi ambayo inatirikwa na maziwa na asali. But they could not be just filled with deep emotion because the day of God's blessing did not mean that they would gain the blessing automatically. Lakini hawa kujazwa na msisimuko wandani sana kwa sababu kusemea kwamba siku ya baraka ya mungi mefika si kwamba watabarikiwa maramoja. There was a problem awaiting to be solved. Kulikuwa na shida ambayo lingojea kutatuliwa. In order to conquer the promised land of Ghana completely, they had to defeat the strong people of the land of Ghana. Diyo kwamba wafike kuteka nchi ya Ghana kika milifu, ilibidi wa shinde watu walio kwa naishi katika nchi ile watu wenye nguvu. This was not possible with only the strength of the Israel people. Na hiyo haikweze kana tu kwa nguvu ya wa Israel wenyewe. Because it was possible only through the power of God. Ni kwa sababu ileze kana tu kwa nguvu za mungu. Therefore, they had to be more clear-minded. Na hivyo basi libidi wawo watu wa akili safi, akili timamu. Therefore, they had to rely on God only. Na ilibidi wa mtegeme mungu tu peke. Therefore, they had to act with firm faith and obedience. Na ilibidi wa tende kwa imani timilifu na kuti. The people of Israel knowing this very well, people cruising the Jordan River. Na wa Israel walijua hivyo vizuri sana kabla ya kuvuka bahari ya sham. Try to calm themselves down. Na wakajaribu kutulia and got to their battle line in order while waiting for God's command. Na wakajipanga na majishi yao kwa utaratibu wa kingojia amri ya mungu. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. Biguzanguni katika Christo. 
especially men's mission member, women's mission member, youth mission member. Sana sana vikundi vya wazee, wamama na hata vijana. You and I are be in a very similar situation. Sisi wote tuko katika ile ile hali. Now is the time when the promise that our Lord, our Lord God had given us and the prayer title for which we have been praying for more than 20 years will be revealed in reality through this man-man church. Wakati umefika, wakati ambapo mungu aneza kujibu maumbi yetu ya kila mwaka kupitia kanisa la man-man church kote duniani na ata wakati umefika tutapokea ahadi za buwana. Now is the time for you to change your mind in order to be spiritual warrior. Wakati umefika kwako wewe, ubadiliki ndio kwamba uwe shuja wa kiroho. With the heart of a pleasing God. Na kwa moyo wa kumpendeza mungu. Looking at the glory and blessing that will be given to you after this trial of a blessing. Tukitafuta na kuangalia mbele utukufu na baraka mba tutapewa katika munda huu wa majaribiyo. Because the blessing that will be given to you is so great. Kwa sababu baraka mba utapewa itakuwa ni kubwa sana. This promise of glory and blessing is not only for the church but for it is also for each of you who belong to this church. Ahadi hii ya utukufu na baraka kubwa si kwa kanisa peke bali ni pia kwenyu njini ambao muko wa shirika hapa kanisani. More over for the people living in this world. Na zaidi kwa watu wote wanawishi huku duniani. Therefore just as the people of Israel sanctified themselves. Na vile vile kama wa Israel walivyo jitakasa. Just as the people of Israel made up their mind from once again. Before they cruise the Jordan River. Na kama vile waliamua moyoni vizuri na ukaudabiti kabla ya kuvuka mtu wa Jordan. Now is the time for men's mission, women's mission member and all man men church member to check our heart and deed once again to refine them in order to be spiritual warrior. Wakati mwifika kwa washirika wote vikundi vya wamama na hata waze vijana washirika wote mujichunguze matendo yenyu, mioyo yenyu, mweze kuzisafisha, mufikie kuwa mashuja wa kiroho. This message will be a good guide post not only for women's mission member but also all our church member to prepare the vessel to receive blessing by checking yourselves. Ujumbe huu utakuwa ni kielekezo bora sana si kwa wanawake peke bali kwa washirika wote hata wazena vijana mweze kujitarisha kama viyombo vya kubarikiwa na kumtukuza mungu. I hope you will deeply consider every single word in your mind and think that each word is for your own blessing so that you can become the prepared vessel to receive your father God's great blessing. Na tumai utachukua kila neno kutoka moyoni mwako la muhimu yu kambo teza kutarisha chombo chako kuwa mtu wa kutumika pamoja na buwana mungu. I would like to tell you the condition that you should meet to receive full blessing. Hebu sasa niweleze masharti amba munafaa mutimize diyo kwamba mpoke baraka kamili. Number one, ya kwanza, the first condition to receive full blessing is that you have to destroy the world of sin completely. Sharti la kwanza diyo kwamba upoke baraka kamili ni kwamba inabidi ubomoe ukuta wadambi ki kamilifu. Our Father God always want to bless his children and answer to their prayers. Baba Mungu kila wakata natamani kujibu maombi ya watoto wake na hata kuwabariki. But if you read the Bible, Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 to. Lakini ukasoma Isaiah hamsini na tisa mstari wa kwanza mbaka tatu. It says, inasema hivi. Surely the Lord, the hand of the Lord is not too short to save. Hakika mkono wabwana si mfupi hata usiweze kuokoa No his ear too dull to hear Wala sikio lake si zito hata lisiweze kusikia But your iniquities have separated you from your God Lakini mauvu yenu ya mewatenga nini na mungu wenu Your sins have hidden his face from you Dambi zenu zimewaficha nini uso wake So that he will not hear Ili 
yeye asisikie for your hand are stained with blood kwa maana mikono yenu imetiwa mawaya damu na vidole vyenu kwa hatia your lips have spoken lies midomo yenu imenena uongo and your tongue mutters wicked things nazo ndimi zenu zimenongona maovu yeah we are doing this in this world continually continually haya ndio mambo ambayo tunafanya huko duniani tukiendelea tu zaidi na zaidi no matter how much god want to give you blessing he cannot give them if you have a wall of sin in your heart haijalishi mungu anataka aje kukupa baraka hawezi kukupa baraka kama uko na ukuta wa dhambi Therefore, people asking for blessing you first have to demolish the wall of sin between you and God. Kwa hivyo basi kabla ya kuomba baraka kutoka kwa Mungu inabidi kwanza uvunje na kubomoa ukuta wa dhambi kati yako na Mungu. Ndio bito so. Wageni, only when you come to my main church today you learn how to understand the wall of sin between and you and remove evil sin, remove mistake remove commission in your heart ni vile tu umekuja man main church ndipo utaelewa jinsi ya kubomoa ukuta wa dhambi kati yako na Mungu na utoe uovu moyoni mwako god opened the way to demolish the wall of sin through the cross of jesus and more eagerly than you yourself through the teaching of our bishop tata jerongi found man main church at the end of the world na mungu alitufungulia njia ya kubomoa kuta zetu za dhambi kupitia msalaba wa kristo yesu na zaidi katika nyakati za mwisho tumefunguliwa njia kupitia mtumishi wa mungu askofu jero kli mwanzilishi wa kanisa la manmin through his teaching you came to know that when you get rid of nine evil sin na kupitia mafunzo yake tumetambua ya kwamba tukifika kutoa mauvu tisa moyoni animal spirit ill feeling hatred telling a lie judging other people people changeable heart adultery greed and rebellion you can stand from on the lack of God's word tukoto mavutisa kama vile hasira kusikia vibaya chuki na wivu kudanganya kuhukumu watu na kubadilika badilika uzinifu tamana hata kuweza kuasi tutaweza kusimama katika mwamba wa imani how many you remove this nine and this nine evil thing in your heart till now nauliza je mpaka sasa wangapi wenyu umeshatoa vitu hivi tisa moyoni if some of you have repented only three things uh, among the nine uh, removed uh, removed them kama kuna wengine kati yenu ambao mmetubu tatu tu alafu mkazitoa hizo tatu God must have heard it and received the repentance haikosi Mungu alikusikia na akaweza kukubali toba yako but six things that you have not repented still remain lakini sita ambazo haukutubu bado zipo so you did not prepare your vessel in upo to receive great blessing kwa hivyo tunaweza sema ya kwamba hujatimia kutarisha chombo chako kamili kupokea baraka i will give you an example hebu nikupe mfano if a water pipe is blocked with dirt and sewage kama pipe ya maji itazibwa na uchafu ama sewage we have to make a hole for the water to run through inabidi tutengeneze shimo ndio kwamba maji ipite but if we just make a small hole the water will only flow slowly slowly lakini tukitengeneza shimo ndogo tu maji itaweza kutiririka pole 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 tu only when the whole pipe is open will water run through quickly ni vile tu shimo itakapofunguliwa kubwa ndipo maji itaweza kutiririka kwa haraka. It's the same to the toilet at home. Vile vile kwa msalani kule nyumbani. If you repent the just some part of your sin and cover to and left some other part of people God. Na kama ulitubu dhambi zingine lakini zingine ukafunika mbele za Mungu, still now you have some wall of sin to that some extent na ujue katika kiwango hicho bado uko na ukuta wa dhambi some kind of walls of sin are blocked or are left na kuna kuta za dhambi ambazo bado zimezibwa zimebaki maybe to love money tuseme kupenda pesa maybe adultery heart uzinifu maybe telling a lie na ile kudanganya maybe jealousy na pengine wivu maybe 
greed. Pengine tama. God want to remove this from your heart. Mungu anataka tutoe hizo zote moyoni mwetu. Ah uh, now please check yourself once again and if there is anything left because you did not realize it I urge you not to cover it with your pride but lay it down before God na kuhimiza ujichunguze tena ambacho hukutambua uweze kutambua ndio kwamba kisifunikwe kupitia kiburi chako uweze kubadilika the most basic condition to participate in the glory and the blessing of this year 2019 is to demolish all walls of sin to stand on the lack of faith ile hali ya msingi sana ndio kwamba tuweze kushiriki katika utukufu na baraka katika mwaka wa 2019 ni ile kubomoa ukuta wa dhambi yes you should not cover the walls of your sin but cast away your evil sin through the word of god inabidi usiwe mtu wa kufunika kuta zako za dhambi lakini kupitia neno la Mungu uondoe uovu moyoni mwako you should remember that there is a repentance that God does not accept even though you have repented with tear and learning nose na ukumbuke kwamba kuna toba ambayo haikubaliki mbele za Mungu hata kama utatubu kwa machozi na kamasi repentance is to turn 180 degree from your pomo way kutubu ya kweli ni kugeuka 180 degrees kutokana na njia zako za kale to pioneer your way in the lord ndio kwamba uanzilishe njia zako katika bwana if you committed adultery when you repented before god did not commit adultery again it is a real repentance ukiwa mtu ambaye alikuwa na zini ukatubu alafu sasa hauzini hiyo ndio kutubu ya kweli if you look at woman lost plea and commit adultery as usual your repentance is not true lakini tuseme umetubu lakini bado unaangalia wanawake kwa tamaa na unazini tena ili kutubu haikuwa ya kweli it means that you have cheated your god jamanisha umemdanganya mungu wako you would rather pay pay up the world of sin more and more. Na badala yake utakuwa wa kurefusha tu kuta zako za dhambi. Then what is the reason that the speed of casting away your sin is slow even though you want to remove your sin and be sanctified? Sababu gani hata kama uko na haja ya kutoa dhambi na kutakasika unapata bado kasi yako ya kutakasika iko chini? When you file up the walls of sin continually the root of your sin would be rooted deep in your heart while you are living in this dark world tunapoishi huko duniani unapozidi kurefusha kuta zako za dhambi utapata mizizi ya dhambi inazidi kuingia kwa undani zaidi Therefore, to get rid of the sins evil sin ndio kwamba tuweze kutoa uovu mambo mabaya only when the word of god that's sharper than any double edged sword Uh, penetrate even to dividing soul and uh, spirit uh, joint and marrow and uh, it judge the sort uh, and attitude of the heart uh, we can be sanctified ndio kwamba tuweze kutakasika vizuri inabidi neno la Mungu ambalo ni hai tena lenye nguvu liweze kuingia ndani yako kuchoma hata kugawa nafsi na roho viungo na mafuta iliyo ndani yake tena ize kutambua mawazo yako kwa undani i will give you another example ni wape mfano mwingine a sunday school student learned from sunday school teacher that you should not terrorize on sunday service katika ibada ya jumapili kwenye sunday school kuna mtoto ambaye amesoma kutoka kwa mwalimu wake hafai kudanganya but accidentally he told a lie to his wife friend lakini kwa bahati mbaya akamdanganya rafiki yake he was she was afraid of telling a lie to his friend na alikuwa anaogopa kumdanganya rafiki yake because he heard message on not to tell lie from his sunday school teacher ni kwa sababu alishasoma kwa mwalimu wake wa sunday school hafai kudanganya because he knew about hell alishajua kuhusu jehanam so he repented and made up his mind not to terrorize again kwa hivyo akatubu ndio kwamba asidanganye tena in case of sunday school students na kama ni sunday school children even though this school sunday school student told the lie to his friend he repented and changed heart not to terrorize 
Na angalia hata mtoto wa Sunday school ameza kutubu mbele za Mungu na kabadilika ndio kwamba asidanganye tena. The sinful nature that is called lie was not rooted in his heart. Inamaanisha asili ya dhambi iitwayo uongo haikuingia ndani ya moyo wake. The Sunday school can keep his pure heart continually till he becomes an adult. Na hivyo basi yule mtoto ataweza kutunza moyo wake kikamilifu hadi atakapofika kuwa mtu mzima. So for your children to attend Sunday school is very important to, to be true children of God. Na hivyo basi inakuwa ya muhimu sana mtoto wako ashiriki Sunday school awe mtoto wa kweli wa Mungu. In case of adult. Lakini kwa mtu mzima people meeting men of God. Kabla kupatana mtumishi wa Mungu. Many evils in rooted in your deep part it's not easy to remove it in a day. Unapata kuna mizizi mingi ya dhambi imeingia ndani ya moyo wako si rahisi kutoa siku moja. Another example. Mfano mwingine. If your dress was stained with thirst while you were walking on the road. Tuseme ulikuwa unatembea barabarani kisha nguo yako imeshikwa na vumbi. You would brush away that dust in your dress. Uteza tu kutingiza alafu vumbi tatoka nguoni. But if your dress was smeared with ink or if your dress was stained with dirt like oil and clay. Lakini tuseme nguo imepakwa na wino ama imepata uchafu wa mafuta au udongo. You would wash your dress with cleaning material or strong detergent. Utaweza kuchukua vifaa vya kuosha nguo na hata kuchukua sabuni kali ndio kwamba uoshe nguo vizuri. Then your dress would be clean again. Ndipo nguo yako itakuwa safi tena. As the cleaning material or the strong chemical detergent wash it wash away the dirt of oil stained in your clothes. We should know that only the word of God can wash away our sins rooted in soul and spirit marrow and joint the sort of our heart kama vile tu kupitia sabuni kali na hata sabuni ya kemikali ndipo nguo ambayo imechafuliwa na wino na hata mafuta na udongo inaweza kusafika vizuri jua ya kwamba kupitia neno la Mungu pekee ndipo taweza kutakasika na neno la Mungu litatusaidia kuingia hata katika nafsi na roho zetu na hata kutazama mawazo yetu kwa undani Hebrew chapter 4 verse 12 says Waibrania 4:12 na tuambia For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any double edged sword Kwa maana neno la Mungu li hai tena lina nguvu lina makali kuliko upanga wote kwenye makali kuwili and penetrate even to dividing and soul and spirit marrow and joint it judge the thought and the attitude of the heart linachoma hata kuzigawanya nafsi na roho viungo na mafuta yaliyo ndani yake tena ni jepesi kuyatambua mawazo na makusudi ya moyo here joint mean the frame of our character Hapa viungo inamaanisha mifumo ya tabia zetu. That is uh, our own righteousness became hardened spiritually. Yaani kumaanisha ngome zetu za haki zimekaushwa na kufanywa ngumu kiroho. And marrow means uh, the root of evil embedded in our deep heart. Na mafuta hapa inamaanisha mzizi wa dhambi ambao umeshikamana na undani wa moyo wetu. We can see the fact that the frame or the simple nature of man would be embedded in our deep heart solidly na hapa tutambue ya kwamba kuna uwezekano ya kwamba viungo na hata mizizi ya dhambi inaweza kushikamana na undani wa moyo wetu kwa ugumu zaidi so that the man who told lie as usual terror lie continually na utapata ambaye hudanganya atazidi tu kudanganya the man who become angry gets angry continually without ending ambaye hupenda kukasirika atazidi tu kukasirika pasipo kujicontrol the man or woman who commit adultery cannot sleep alone without committing adultery at night yule ana mazoezi ya kwenda kuzini kila usiku hawezi kulala usiku mmoja pasipo kuzini after attending nairobi manmin church baada ya kushiriki nairobi manmin church when they commit sin in the beginning 
they would say I will not do it again. Watakapo patikana umetenda dhambi kisha wanatubu sitatenda tena. Nebodresu they continue to commit sin. Isitoshe wanaendelea kutenda dhambi. So it is not easy for them to remove the simple nature in their heart easily. Kwa hivyo si rahisi kwa kutoa asili ya dhambi moyoni mwao. Hebrew chapter 12 verse 6. Waibrania 12:4 inasema You have not yet reached to the point of shedding your blood in your struggle against your sin. Katika kushindana kwenu dhidi ya dhambi bado hamjapigana kiasi cha kumwaga damu yenu. Then now is the time for you to reach to the point of shedding your blood in your struggle against your sin. Na wakati sasa umefika ndio kwamba upigane kwa kiasi cha kumwaga damu yako ukishindana dhidi ya dhambi. To reach full blessing in order to be spiritual warrior. Ndio kwamba upokee baraka kamili uwe shujaa wa kiroho. You are so blessed because the Lord God sent you to Manmin Church to hear the message of holiness through the teaching of our shepherd Bishop Dr. Jerome. Na nini ni watu ambao mebarikiwa sana kuja hapa Manmin mweze kusike ujumbe kupitia skofu Jerokli na mpate baraka. And he sent me to Africa to help you to resist to the point of shedding your blood in your struggle against your sin in order to stand on the love face to be a spiritual warrior. Na ameni tuma hapa Africa ndiyo kwamba ni wasaidie mpigane kiasi cha kumwaga damu mukishindana na dhambi zenu hata mweze kufikia kusimama katika mwambo wa imani kuwa mashujaa wa kiroho. Or we should think over and over how much God love you in every moment. Na mnafaa kila wakati muwazie na muwazie jinsi Mungu anawapenda. All of you should have the engraver in your heart that the Lord Jesus Christ died and shed a precious, a precious blood on the cross for you and that Holy Spirit himself inserted interceded for you with a groan. Na mnafamu kumbuke na mchore moyoni mwenyu kwa uzuri zaidi ya kwamba Yesu alimwaga damu yake msalabani na keza kutesika kwa sababu ya dambi zako na mweze kushukuri ya kwamba roo mtakatifu anakulilia kwa majonzi. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 10 to 11 Katika Petro wa kwanza 3 kumi mbaka kumi na moja Peter said Petro akasema For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil. Yeyote apendaye uzima na kuona siku njema basi auzuie ulimi wake usinene mabaya. Keep your tongue from evil. Uzuie ulimi wako kutokana na mabaya. Keep your lips from speaking deceit. Uzuie midomo yako isiseme mabaya. Yes, you should know that you are the precious God's children that the Lord Jesus Christ purchased with his precious brother. Inafaa mutambue na mkumbuke ya kwamba muko watoto wa damana wa mungu ambao kwa lo Yesu alimwaga damu yake ya damana msalabani. So when you really realize that God Jesus died on for your sin and my sin, how do you know how to remove this evil sin, how to be holy, how to resemble heart of God. Ukeza kuhisi na kukumbuka vizuri ya kwamba Yesu alikufa msalabani juu ya dhambi zako utatafuta kutoa uovu mioni mwako ufanyike mtoto wa kweli wa Mungu. Therefore you should lead a victorious life holding this love of the Lord Jesus Christ saving soul from the hand of the enemy Satan devil. Inabidi ushikilie upendo huo wa Mungu na wabadilike weze kusaidia nafsi wengi kutokana na mikono ya adui shetani. Number two. Ya pili. Second condition to reach a full blessing in order to be a spiritual warrior is that the deed of faithfulness and service is important but to love God from the bottom of your heart is even more important. Sharti ya pili njo kwamba tupoke baraka kamili ni kwamba ile matendo ya waminifu na kazi inakua ya muhimu. Lakini ya muhimu zaidi ni kumpenda mungu kwa moyo wako wote. Many of my members in Korea, in Kenya, offer a lot to God, work hard for God, are longing for the reward 
in the kingdom of God. Wengi wa washiriki wa manmin ile ni Korea na kote duniani wanakuwa na hamu ya kutoa sadaka mbele za Mungu na kujitoa katika kazi za Mungu ndio kwamba watarajie zawadi kule binguni in Korea headquarter kule headquarter Korea some pastor and rabbi and rabbis give up their good job that the old people can envy wengi wao wameacha wengi wao kati ya wafanyikazi wameacha kazi zao nzuri ambazo watu wengi wanatamani duniani and oppose themselves to god because they wanted to work in the house of god na wakajitoa kikamilifu mbele za mungu juu walitamani kufanya kazi nyumbani kwa mungu as a doctor in the hospital yule alikuwa daktari hospitalini received much salary akipokea mshahara mingi but received small salary work in the soul head to church lakini akakuja headquarter church kupokea tu mshahara kidogo anafanya kazi pale there are also many man men members who work hard all day in their job and come to do the work of god peacefully praying to God in the house of God. Na kando na hao kuna wale ambao ni washiriki wanafanya kazi kwa bidii kule nje wanakuja kanisani na kuomba kwa bidii. When God look at them doing the work of God how lovely they must be. Na Mungu akiwatazama wakifanya kazi ya Mungu kwa bidii wanawapendeza Mungu sana. God obviously want to remember and bless them more than others. Na ni kawaida Mungu atawapenda zaidi na atataka kuwabariki zaidi ya wengine. But what is important is whether you are peaceful with your true love for God. Na kini cha maana ni uko mwaminifu kweli kweli kwa upendo wako kwa Mungu. Of course you can be peaceful and give your life because you love God but you should check whether or not you are in crying to working and action rather than the love for God itself. Of course ile kujitoa na kufanya kazi kwa bidii inaonyesha upendo wako kumwelekea Mungu lakini ni muhimu sana uko mtu wa kushikilia tu matendo ya kazi pasipo kushikilia upendo wako ndani ya moyo wako kumwelekea Mungu. Or even if you started with love for God whether or not you are just getting accustomed to your work. Hama tuseme ujichunguze ulianza kwa upendo wa Mungu lakini sasa umeshikamana tu na kazi yako tu kikawaida. Even in the world there are people who do their job faithfully. Hata duniani kuna wale ambao utenda kazi zao kwa uaminifu. There are some people who is diligent and positive attitude so that they fulfill their job once it is given to them kuna watu ambao wako na bidii watu wapenda kazi ambao hutimiza kazi zao ambazo wamepewa or sometimes work hard because they like to work na kuna wengine wanafanya tu kazi kwa bidii juu tu wanapenda kazi still others work hard looking for reward or promotion they will get in return in their working place na utapata wengine kazini wanafanya tu kazi kwa bidii ndio kwamba waweze kupata dawabu na hata wapate promotion katika kazi zao but the kind of faithful is that God want you to show is not the self oriented in Judaism but you did coming out from your deep heart and the true love lakini aina ya uaminifu ambao Mungu anataka tuonyeshe si ile ya shauku ya kujitegemea lakini matendo yanayotoka kilindini cha moyo wako na tena kwa upendo wa kweli God want the aroma of your heart that try to please God because you love God from the bottom of your heart Mungu anatafuta manukato ya moyo wako inatokana na upendo ambao unapenda Mungu kwa kilindini cha moyo wako Then how can you check whether you are being faithful in a way that is pleasing in God's sight Na hebu sasa utajichunguza aje kama kweli uko mwaminifu kwa njia ambayo inampendeza Mungu Theo could you menacing but most to directly you can check it with your worship service and prayer life kuna mengi mengi ya kuchunguza lakini ile ya msingi sana ni uchunguze ibada zako na maombi yako a worship service is the time when we worship god the almighty and listen to his word in the house of god on sunday wednesday and friday online service ibada zetu zote katika jumapili wednesday na friday inakuwa ni wakati wa kupatana na mungu kumsikiza kusikiza neno lake Just as we see the face of our father and hear the voice of our loving father 
or worship service is the time that we can realize the heart and will of Father God through the message preached from the prophet. Kama vile tu mnaona baba zenu na mnapendezwa kusikia sauti zao ibada kanisani vile vile ni wakati ambapo tuko na ile matamanio ya kuweza kutambua moyo na mapenzi ya Mungu na kupitia ujumbe ambao tuhubiriwa kwenye madhabahu. Oh, so is the time Paul also to meet and speak to God. Ibada ni wakati wa kupatana na kuongea na Mungu wetu. So if you truly love God, you will long for worship service. Na hiyo basi kama kweli unampenda Mungu, utakuwa na matarajio kwenda kwenye ibada. And the message will be sweet as honey and honey comb. Na ujumbe utakuwa mtamu sana kama vile asali. Even though you are tired with the work from for 6 days in the working place. Na hata kama umechoka kutokana na kazi katika siku sita when you come to church you worship and pray to God ujapo kanisani kufanya ibada na kuomba mbele za Mungu you would receive new strength and grace to win over this world utaweza kupokea nguvu na neema mpya ndio kwamba ushinde dunia hii you would not be late in the worship service na utaweza kuchelewa kwenye ibada yoyote never be late in the service haifai uchelewe kwenye ibada never haifai never haifai come to Oreo, never say walking at home, you say, never say like this. Usiseme huku na shuguli nyumbani na bidi uje mapema. You would not worship the Lord God to ujin with a world resort or just formality of attendance. Na uta kutia kwenye ibada tu ile kwa kusinzi ama kushiriki tu ibada tu juya kushiriki tu. I will tell you. Nitawambia. After starting Nairobi Manmin Church. Baada ya kwanza Nairobi Manmin Church. I never miss one minute attending morning prayer meeting, evening prayer meeting. Kila ane ya maombi ya subuhi jioni sijawai chelewa hata dakika. For 19 years. Kwa miaka kuminatisa. Never be late one minute. Sijawai chelewa hata dakika. In the morning prayer meeting, in the evening prayer meeting. Asubuhi na hata jioni kwenye mkutano wa maombi. The Lord bless me attend the open. All the service Wednesday, so Friday and uh, Sunday service. Mungu amenibariki niweze kushiriki kwa wakati naofa ibada zote Jumapili hata Wednesday. Also prayer is the breath, breath of our spirit. Na ujue pia maombi ni pumzi ya roho zetu. It's a time to talk to God and to share our love with him. Na ni wakati wa kunena na Mungu na kushiriki upendo na yeye. When you pray and lay your broken heart before God, he gives us peace and comfort. Unapoomba na kuweka moyo wako uliovunjika mbele za Mungu, naye Mungu anakutuliza na kukupa amani. When you ask the Lord God, the Holy Spirit let us realize and give us answer to what we need to ask and desire. Tunapo omba mbele za mungu, roo mtakatifu anatutambua na natupa majibu kwa ambacho tunaitaji na ambacho tunataka. Furthermore, when we confess with inspiration, Father, I love you. Lord, I love you. The Father will fill our heart fully with love and grace in this time of prayer. Zaidi, tukeza kufika kukiri kwa msisimuko ya kwamba baba nakupenda, buwana nakupenda, baba mungu atafika kujaza miyo yetu kikamilifu kwa upendo na neema katika wakati wako wa maombi. In this physical world, kuku duniani, if you are far away from your lover, you will want to hear his or her voice and call him or her many times even though in a day. Ukiwa mbali na mpenzi wako, kila wakati utakuwa na tamani kusikia sauti yake, na hivyo basi kwa siku moja tu uneza muita mara mingi. After getting married, do not to do that. Lakini baada ya kuwawa, munaacha hiyo. People getting married, you want to like this. Hamble ya kuwawa, munafanya vile. In the same way, vile vile, if you truly love God, the time of prayer to talk to the Father must be a happy moment. Kama kweli unampenda mungu wakati wako wa maombi ambapo nazungumuza na mungu wako inafakwa ni wakati wa furaha. You will not just pray habitually as you have always been praying, being filled with the idols or to or just filling the time. Na utabaki mtu tu wa kuomba tu kawaida tu ya kuomba, atijua tu uomba, ukijazo na mawazo ya kidunia na kupitisha tu wakati. Even when you pray to sanctify yourself and when you pray for the kingdom of God, you will pray with the true heart from deep inside your heart. 
Na hata unapoomba ndio kwamba utakasike ama unapoomba kwa sababu ya ufalme wa mbinguni ufalme wa Mungu utaomba kwa moyo wa kweli kutoka ndani ya moyo wako. God want to receive the oromo of your heart. Na Mungu anatamani aweze kupokea manukato ya moyo wako. Also your papa mama want to receive oromo your the heart of your children at home too vile vile wazazi nyumbani wanatamani wapoke manukato ya moyo ya watoto if your children dearly study hard get a good mark obey papa mama would when they come to you ask papa i want to buy shoe too i want to buy shoes i want my bag Immediately, Papa, even though he do not eat lunch, even though he have no money to enjoy it, you know, he prepare money. My son, my daughter, please buy shoe, please buy bed. Without think something, your Papa, after knowing the aroma of your heart, want to give something to their children. Vile vile pia nyumbani watoto wakiwa watu wa kusoma kwa bidii wanatii maneno ya wazazi hata wakiomba chochote kwa mzazi mzazi atakuwa ashapokea manukato ya moyo wao akiwaomba kitu atataka kuanunulia kwa haraka sana juu amependezwa na manukato ya moyo wao church is of manmin family kanisa ni jamii ya manmin family church family is more important family ya kanisa ni ya muhimu zaidi between spiritual father and the spiritual and the spiritual son you and you or of you kati ya baba wa kiroho na nyinyi wote wana wa kiroho what kind of relation god want to you tuko na relation with your senior pastor and your children usiano gani mungu anataka niwe na nyinyi kama wana wa kiroho even though in your no one i do not know your face na hata kama sijui sura zenu then you know me unanijua tu i do not know you lakini sikujui who you are wewe ni nani then do you think that you are the man mean church member unaweza sema uko man mean church member not a man mean church member au uko mshirika wa man mean as a leader kama kiongozi do not know how to come to see me haujui kuona askofu he can be a man mean family anaweza kuwa man mean family kweli you understand the, the system of the world the system of the kingdom of god inabidi muelewe system ya dunia na system ufalme wa mungu who can be blessed from the lord god nani wakubarikiwa na mungu If you are a church worker, elder, senior deacons and the home cell leader, especially the video you are the more you have to play attention to your worship service and the prayer. Sana sana kama uko mfanyikazi kanisani ama mzee kanisani senior deacons viongozi wote, sana sana kama uko busy ndio wakati ambapo unafaa kutilia mkazo katika maombi na hata ibada then how about the man mean church member na je sasa washirika wa Nairobi man mean church truly truly i tell you to your long for worship service and enjoy praying to God every day kweli kweli na wauliza kweli kweli je mnayo hamu ya kuingia katika baada na kufurahia maombi kila siku already i have so new when you play when i pray for people God God answer my prayer heal do you solve your problem tayari nimeshawadhibitishia kupitia maombi yangu niliwaombea Mungu akatatua matatizo yenu to the blind receive sight the proof wakaona cripple walk wale mavu wakatembea and the tape could hear nata uvizi wakasikia so could be healed kansa ikaponywa i show you that god's living god nikaonyesha mungu kweli anaishi then how to meet your god how to speak to your god to be blessed from god na sasa inabidi ujikaze kutafuta mungu upatana na yeye ndio kwamba ubarikiwe yes many of you long for worship service enjoy praying to god is true na mnajua wengi wenu mnafurahia katika ibada na mnakuwa na hamu ya kuomba but if some of you say i am so busy to do something at home on sunday morning lakini kama kuna wengi wenu ambao mnasema mko na shughuli nyumbani sunday so, asubuhi so i was late in the service na ndio kafanya uchelewe kwenye ibada Can you please really please the Lord God? Kweli kweli utakuwa mtu wa kumpendeza Mungu. And as a church leaders, na kama kiongozi kanisani, if you missed Friday or Sunday service or Sunday service, 
from time to time ujipate umekosa ibada ya mkesha ibada ya jumapili kila wakati who can trust you as a church leader nani atakuamini kama kiongozi kanisani who can say to you you are faithful and sincere people god nani atakuambia uko mwaminifu mtu wa kweli mbele za Mungu if you truly love god especially as church leader you will never be late in the worship service you will never miss every worship service in the house of god kama kweli kweli unapenda Mungu sana sana viongozi wetu hutaweza kuchelewa katika kila ibada na hutaweza hata kukosa ibada yoyote on sunday you will come early or in the morning and pray before god prepare the worship service and welcome church member as a leader and ushers na hata jumapili utajikaza kuja kanisani asubuhi na mapema kuomba mbele za Mungu na kutarisha ibada kama viongozi na mashumanzi even though you come early in the morning and pray before god prepare the service when you do all the work of god to be done god want you to give your lovely heart first na hata kama umekuja kanisani mapema na ukaomba ukatarisha ibada ukafanya kazi zote ambazo zinahitajika lakini ya muhimu sana ambayo mungu anangoja ni kutoa moyo wako wa upendo when god received the aroma of your in the heart then he lead you into prosperity so that you will bear good fruit na wakati mungu atapokea manukato ya moyo wako wenye upendo ndipo atakuongoza uweze kufanikiwa na uweze kuzaa matunda mema this is not only for some worker or leader worship service and prayer are the most basic element in a christian life and is the easiest way to please God. Na hiyo si tu kwa wafanyikazi na viongozi pekee, lakini ibada na maombi inakuwa ni kipengele cha msingi kwa Mkristo yoyote na inakuwa ni njia rahisi ya kumpendeza Mungu. It is also the easiest way to meet God. Na ndipia ni njia rahisi ya kupatana na Mungu. On the country if you neglect your worship service and prayer, it is disappointing to God Father. Upande mwingine uka hata kukosa ibada na kukosa maombi itakuwa ni ya kuvunja moyo wa Mungu Baba. If you are disappointed in God, how can it be possible for you to even ask God for answer and blessing? Na kama unavunja moyo wa Mungu kwa namna hiyo, itawezekanaje uende mbele zake atunaomba baraka? If you have not been worshiping in spirit in truth or if you neglect your prayer please make yourself humble and kneel down people God and repent naomba mjichunguze kama mko watu ambao hamkufanya ibada kwa roho na kweli na mlipuzulia maombi tafadhali nyenyekea piga magoti na utubu mbele za Mungu especially if you have been dozing over and had idols or to regularly please wake up and change your mind to fix your eye on Jesus Christ. Sana sana kama umekuwa mtu wa kusinzia kila wakati katika kila ibada, naomba uweze kuamka ndio kwamba face like Paul and Moses and Peter, high level of face, we can defeat enemy, win soul from the hand of enemy living in this dark world. Tukafika kuwa na imani ya ngazi ya juu kama vile Paulo na Petro na Musa, ndipo tutapata nguvu za kushinda adui na kuweza kupokonya nafsi kutoka mikononi mwa adui huku duniani. Even though you have the sharp sword. Na hata uko na upanga mkali. If you do not know how to handle this sword well, you cannot defeat enemy, do not kill enemy. Hata kama uko na upanga mkali na hujui kuitumia vizuri, hutashinda adui. If you have the word of this message powerfully uko na neno la nguvu kama hili even though you know so devil second and first step na hata unajua mbingu ya kwanza pili na tatu you know the face of job unajua imani ya ayubu you know the message of book of level what will happen at the end of the world ushajua ushajua ambacho kitatendeka nyakati za mwisho kupitia kitabu cha ufunuo you know how to teach message to the people living in the world help them to repent to change the mind return to the lord god na hata unajua ile yote inabidi utambue jinsi gani ya kusaidia watu kupitia ujumbe huo ndio kwamba wabadilike so come to church worship the lord ndio ukikuja kanisani kufanye ibada so kama kiongozi you will be late umechelewa the new bitches wageni nao they think that oh even the leader be late in the service oh it is okay for me to be late in the service mgeni akiona kiongozi amechelewa ataona sawa tu hata kiongozi anachelewa nitachelewa tu 
for me ndio maana kwangu mimi pastor, hata kwa wachungaji elder, kwa wazee ndebo miss one minute in the play time i fight to cause na tuchelewe ibada ta dakika then moja i can teach you from the pulpit ndipo nitaweza kuwafunza hapa please do not miss any prayer meeting tafadhali msikose maombi yoyote prepare the service utarisha ibada for the glory of the yote kwa utukufu wa Mungu I would like to want all of you. Bona nataka nyinyi nyote to be a faithful child of God, commander of army of the Lord. Mungu anataka mufikie kuwa watoto waaminifu, majemedari katika kundi la Bwana. Yeah, clever and together. Tonight in the evening, katika baada ya jioni, all the living in Umoja in Noko. Wote ambao mnaishi hapa Umoja na Inako. Sasa if you want to go to home lunch time. Kama unataka kwenda nyumbani lunch time, don't miss in the evening devotional service. Unaweza enda lakini usikose baada ya pili leo this message a woman as a help. Usikie ujumbe kuhusu mwanamke msaidizi. All the men. Na waze wote you need this message. Unahitaji huo ujumbe. May the Lord bless you. Mubarikiwe. <laughs> Asante sana. Na udi prestendo. Tafadhali tusimame. Raise hand. Nyosha mkono basi. Oh, raise your voice. Na unyoshe sauti yako. Thank God. Shukuru Mungu. Ah, uh, to be to bless uh, to reach blessing from the Lord God. Kupokea baraka kutoka kwa Mungu. There is a condition. Kuna masharti. Obey he would keep his commandments. Kwanza kutima neno ya Mungu kufuata amri zake. Raise your hand. Nyosha sauti na mikono. Thank God. Na ushukuru Mungu basi. Shukuru Mungu kwa moyo wako wote. Cry out to Lord. Tupaze sauti mbele za Mungu. Tushukuru Mungu tunashukuru Mungu Mama wewe ni Mungu mkuu umetuwezesha mwana tunakutukuza tuchumbe umetuguza moyo mama tuko watoto wako tusitende dhambi mbele zako baba tukiomba tupokee majibu baba baba shasha sauti mbele za Mungu guza moyo wa Mungu baba ombe mbele zako jaswa na Mungu takatifu roho wa toba washukie wote mwili wako wote zako takatifu bwana bwana wasamee dhambi za wote bwana waguza moyo wa Mungu guza moyo wa Mungu bwana Bwana wabariki wote shukuru Mungu kwanza sauti shukuru Mungu asante Bwana kupitia mafunzo ya kutupaji wetu asante kutuma mali kutoa jumbe huu Bwana tunakushukuru tu badilike Bwana tunataka kuwa takatifu tushiriki ibada na Bwana tusikutukuza Bwana asante kwa nguvu zako kwa neema ya Mungu jibu mwombi yao jibu mwombi yao Bwana na hata wote wasilale wasilale kwenye ibada wasikuwe na mawazo kwenye ibada da wasaidie wateso na rom takatifu watoto wa kweli wa Mungu baba baba wengine sote sande wabariki bwana wote mkono ni mwako katika jina la Yesu Kristo nimeomba amen put your hand on your heart jitilie mkono kifuani our shepherd bishop pray for you mchungaji askofu atatuombea Hallelujah Almighty Father God of love. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Almighty Father God of love. Please lay your hands on all brothers and sisters receiving this prayer here in attendance. Lay your hands on all the members of the brain churches and local centuries and all the GCN TV viewers and those who are watching via satellites, cables and internet all over the world. Plant faith in their hearts and drive out their negative thoughts and doubts. Let all the trials and afflictions leave them. By the fire of the Holy Spirit, from head to toe, scorch their sick and affected parts, including all cells, tissues and nerves, all internal organs and intestines. Let the light of creation come upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, all diseases, germs and viruses, and infirmities go away. Let the light shine on them. Scorch their incurable and long-term diseases by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Burn all kinds of endemic and contagious diseases like malaria. All epidemic diseases such as colds and fever go away from them. Protect them, Father, from any kind of germs and viruses and bacteria.
Heal them of all kinds of cancers, stomach cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, breast cancer, womb cancer, intestinal cancer. And all other diseases like AIDS, leukemia, cerebral apoplexy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, women's disease, thyroid diseases, and all inflammations. Let them be made whole from the polio, stroke, arthritis, herniated discs, and many others. Let all kinds of pains disappear from them, like back pain, headache, and neuralgia. Set them free from epilepsy, autism, depression, neurosis, and all other mental diseases. Loosen them from all kinds of paralysis and let them get up, walk, and jump. Let them regain good eyesight and restore good hearing. Let the blind open their eyes, let the deaf come to hear, and let the mute begin to speak. Heal accidents after effects. Restore their ruptured and broken bones. Restore them from burns and let the heat and burning sensation go away from them. Father, let there be no scars left. Be cleansed from all kinds of drug addictions and poisoning. Father, regenerate dead nerves, tissues and cells and bring the dead back to life. Bless them to conceive a baby. Father, please give them blessing to conceive a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the enemy devil and Satan, the ruler of the air, the evil forces and their servants, go away from them. Go away, evil spirits, unclean spirits, deceiving spirits, spirits of falsehood, separating spirits and all forces of darkness. Loosen all bones of wickedness and darkness and go away from them. Let the light shine on them. Father God, give them strength to cry out in prayer and empower them with the power to cast off sins and become sanctified. Let them be in good health as their soul becomes prosperous, and let their family be evangelized. Protect them from all kinds of accidents and disasters, and bless them to lead a successful and prosperous life in everything. Please protect your children, their homes and business, and their work with the fiery hedge of the Holy Spirit, with heavenly hosts and angels, and with your blazing eyes. Give students wisdom and understanding and fill their hearts with more passion and desire for study. Keep their hearts and minds from worldly things and plant into their hearts more fervent love for God. Bless your children and let them give glory to you in everything they do, whether they eat or drink or whatever they may do. Let them confess and testify to the living God, I have met and experienced God and received His answers and blessings. Father God, thank you. Let all glory be to you alone. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. GCN